Next, you need to check for the minimum and maximum rebar area as given in the formula here. Substitute NED and FYK into the formula here. You get 414mm square. And use this formula and substitute the width and height of the columns size here you will get to 10 mm square the provided amount of reinforcement bar is greater than as mean therefore it is considered satisfactory next Use the AS provided divided by the column size, you will get about 2 point something percent of the reinforcement bar. This is less than 4% maximum, therefore it is considered satisfactory. Now we look into the links of the columns. The bar size is determined by 1 per 4 bar diameter and at least 6 mm for the link. Substitute the value into this formula where in our provisions of the reinforcement bar 25 mm bar size was used. Therefore, the minimum link size will be equals to 6.25. You know that there is no link of this size the closest link size which is greater than this value will be at mm. The question suggested the provided link equals to 6 mm is less than this value. Therefore, it is not satisfactory. We will need to change the link size to become at mm. Next, you will need to check for the spacing of the link. It is determined by this formula. This bar size here represents the smallest bar diameter used in the column. You know that the provided reinforcement bar, the smallest size is 20. Therefore, this will be 20 times 20 equals to 400. B is 300. H is 350. And there is another 400. Choose the minimum value of these four components. We know that the maximum allowable spacing for the link will be 300 mm. It is also noted that at the lapping joint of the column for the bar size greater than 14 mm the calculated maximum spacing will have to be reduced to be multiplied with 0 0.6 that gives you 180 mm for the lapping and joints now your shear length needs to be equals to 8 spacing at 300 throughout the column as for the join you can provide 170 spacing next you will need to check for the biaxial bending based on the euro code clause 5.8.9 based on these formulas you have the med in the z and y axis obtained in your previous calculations you need to determine the factor A here. This is determined from the table here, which you know the NED. You will need to compute the NRD. Use these equations for you to determine the NRD, which is equals to 2615.9 kN. The ratio between the NED and NRD is equals to 0.688. Use interpolations for the ratio of 0.688 in order for you to obtain the A here as the power of the ratio of the moment load divided by the moment resistance.
the A now is calculated as 1.49. Next, you need to determine the moment resistance in the axis Z and axis Y. It is determined based on the amount of reinforcement bar provided as well as the axial load acting on the member. You know the NED and you know the property of the columns. Now you need to determine the amount of reinforcement bar. Based on our previous calculations, these are the reinforcement bar provided in total. In terms of the arrangement of the reinforcement bar, it is indicated here. They are YY axis and ZZ axis. Let us look at the ZZ axis first. The moment rotation is in these directions. Your total amount of reinforcement bar will be equals to 4T25 plus 2T20. As given here, and your amount of reinforcement bar area will be this. Next, we look into the YY axis here. Since that these two reinforcement bar, which is 2T20, is positions along the YY axis. That means this two reinforcement bar is not contributing any moment resistance. Therefore, Effectively, the amount of reinforcement bar in the YY axis, it will be 4T25. As written here, and the total amount of reinforcement bar are here. Your next step is to determine the ratio of D2 per H and D2 per B. As you are talking about the bending moment at different axis. Therefore, the D2 will be in reference to their respective axis. That will give you different value of D2 per H. With the non azure load, you get the ratio of 0.6857. And based on the amount of effective reinforcement bar, Substitute into the value, you get this two. Next, refers to the chart of D2 per H of 0 0.15. Determine the positions of the S axis when these two is intercepted with each other. Draw a horizontal line around the point 6.9 something as long as the curve of around 0 0.5 the intersections it will be at 0 0.105 Next we look into the YY axis Draw a horizontal line at a point of 0 0.69 intersect with the point of 0 0.38 somewhere here the intersections will fall around 0 0.07 with the norm value of bh square fck you will be able to determine the moment resistance of the sections now you have determined the moment resistance of the sections based on the moment load acting on the sections and with the factor A as the power obtained from the interpolation here you are able to determine the summations of these two ratio in the power of A Substitute the relevant value you obtain 1.09 this is greater than 1.0 that means the amount of reinforcement bar is not sufficient in this case you will need to adding additional reinforcement bar to ensure this to pass with that you increase the size of reinforcement bar into 6y25 
Again, you will have to refer to the amount of reinforcement bar in respect to the YY and ZZ axis. Now we look into the ZZ axis. The moment is rotating in this direction and the reinforcement bar contributing the moment resistance are 6Y25 as given here and you know the amount of reinforcement bar is equal to 2945 mm square now we look at the yy axis two of the reinforcement bar here is passing through the axis which is not contributing to moment resistance therefore effectively the moment resistance is contributed by 4y25 then the amount of reinforcement bar is equal to 1963 mm square. Now go back to the design chart and go through the process in order for you to determine the moment resistance of the member. As the amount of the reinforcement bar in the YY axis will be the same, therefore the M per BH square FCK obtained it will be the same as the previous with the new amount of reinforcement bar here draw a line around 0.69 something to be intersect with the AS line of 0.56 something you will obtain around 0.12 with the section property of the column, you are able to determine the moment resistance of the column. Adopt the moment resistance into the formula here. You obtain the new formula output is equal to 0 0.99, which is less than 1.0. That means the moment will pass in the biaxial bending.